a photo shoot for a Western fashion magazine, but instead this is downtown Tehran and Bahal is getting ready to go out. A few years ago, no woman would have dared to appear on the streets of Iran wearing makeup. But there's a new era of liberalism in the country since President Khatami came to power two and a half years ago. Even though women still have to cover their bodies and heads, the strict moral guardians no longer check whether a stray hair is showing or whether young couples fall in the park. In today's Iran, the winds of change are sweeping through and it's the younger generations who are benefiting. When it comes to marriage, most young people will still have to follow their parents' ideals. Yes, our parents knew each other before they got married, but we didn't. We still had to ask me first. However, for Bahal, an arranged marriage would be inconceivable. Like most young women in Iran, she doesn't want to be surprised by her parents' choice, so she has a boyfriend. Amir and I go to the same university. The first time we met was in the university library. Straight away we really liked each other. Amir secretly tried to give me his phone number. It didn't work because it was too difficult. But eventually I did manage to get hold of it. In any case, I couldn't give him my number as I would have got into trouble with my parents' phone. I called him first. For our date, we arranged to meet in this park. Although the law states it's forbidden for men and women to be together in public, the pair still meet, often in a tea house on the outskirts of the city. Neither have told their parents as an immediate marriage is out of the question. In Iran, there are still many obstacles for aspiring couples to overcome. The high unemployment rate and an unfavorable economic climate don't leave much leeway for us to think about getting married. The main thing is that I like the whole very much. But since we're not considering marriage, our parents mustn't find out about our relationship. Like many of their contemporaries, Bahor and Amir are also afraid that they'll be unable to find work once their studies are complete. In the last 20 years, the population of Tehran has doubled, and the majority of people are now under 20. Stiff competition for jobs, though, has not dented the thoughts of a greater freedom. I have nothing against the Islamic dress code, quite the contrary. I even think it's a good thing. But I would like to be more free in thought. I think that we women could achieve a lot more in the society if we had greater freedom. Many believe that the road to freedom has been due to the Shador. A symbol of repression in the West, the black robe has been obligatory since the 79 revolution. Claims that it's allowed Iranian women to prosper is in contrast to life under the Shah, when perceived decadent attitudes led many families to keep their daughters at home. More than 20 years on, women can even publicly participate in sports. A few years ago, conservative mullahs would not have allowed this, even with the shadow. Until recently, we had no right to come here and take part in sports, in spite of our Islamic dress. We've only had more rights and can move around more freely since Qatami was elected as president.
Reformist President Mohammed Katami is the idol of young people, particularly women, who played an important part in his 97 election. Despite some changes, his mandate to modernize Iran has been resisted by the religious hierarchy. Power still lies in the hands of traditional Shiite clerics, as the students who went on the streets to demonstrate recently came to realize. Here we are driving past the student residence where the clashes took place a few months ago. The banning of the liberal newspaper Salom led to conflicts between extremist and moderate religious groups. The extremist forces tried to undermine Katami's influence. The universities were temporarily closed due to the unrest. Since the clashes, Baho and Amir have decided to be more careful. Like many of their friends, they're keeping a low profile, away from the public gaze. They still dance together, even though this is forbidden. For the time being, they'll have to be content with small freedoms. And one of those is shopping. In Iran today, prevailing attitudes amongst the young are best expressed in the arcades and shopping malls. Despite the strict separation of men and women, Bahal buys a saucy sun top from a male shop assistant. The contradictions in Iran today are immense. After the brief shopping spree, everyone goes their separate ways again, quite literally. The buses are fitted with an iron barrier to separate men and women. But thanks to modern technology, the crude system of apartheid is undermined. The desire for freedom in Iran is greater than ever. Western attitudes are once again creeping back into society. For the all-powerful mullahs, reconciling Islam with the modern world will be an enormous challenge. <laughs>